Welcome, welcome. Uh, it's a uh, new year, first uh, first live stream of the year. So, uh, welcome if you're here. Uh, I can see we've got Nicola in the uh, chat already, which is great. Um, if you are uh, willing to, do say hello in the chat. It's always nice to know who we've got uh, on the stream. Uh, just pop a hello message, let us know where you are in the world, uh, what part of the world you're in, and also um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and what your connection is with project management, what your interest is in today's live stream. Uh, so uh, we can kind of find out who we've got. Um, not a huge number of people on stream at the moment, I think. Uh, I think it's, we've got about uh, half a dozen or so. So hopefully more people will join us. I do have a habit, I'm afraid, as a project manager of starting on time. Uh, so uh, that may or may not uh, uh, suit everyone. Um, and of course, if you're missing this, then you're not hearing this, but uh, they're, they're, it'll be available uh, permanently uh, for catch up. So um, I'm going to move straight along. Um, not a lot of news. Uh, what have we got? Ashad, there is a, I did want to um, plug a YouTube channel uh, today um, because I just today, <laughs> this morning, received this in the post, uh, Scrum Mastery, which was recommended by um scott adams uh not the dilbert scott adams but uh the not scrum dumb scott adams so if you are interested in scrum or actually i have to say in project management in general not scrum dumb is an excellent channel let me just uh, find it uh, uh on my uh other screen let's just uh, flip over to um the browser for a moment and find not scrum dumb bear with me there we go um so this is andriana marshall and scott adams and each of their episodes is a short conversation about a topic of interest particularly to scrum masters uh but also to all project managers and i do recommend it it's a channel that uh has recent not that long ago hit a uh, thousand subscribers doing nicely really sh good short punchy videos of them talking um i just find it really engaging uh the, the way that they talk about the topic so um and so uh thank you to scott adams uh for recommending this book uh they did a uh an episode where they both recommended one book each and i was particularly taken uh by scott's description of this book so i thought i would order it um it's going to join the massive TBR pile, but um, Scrum Mastery by Jeff Watts. So uh, take a look at the channel um, and listen to uh, Scott talk about this video, uh, this book, or maybe even uh, you might be more attracted by the book that uh, Andriana uh, recommends. Let me find. There we go. It was about three weeks ago. There we go. Let me just uh, grab the URL for the. Uh, for the episode uh, where they recommended two books. Um, that's quite a nice introduction to their styles, personalities, and the kind of nature of the uh, of the uh, show. So, uh, where we go. Uh, so, uh, not scrum dumb, isn't it? So it's at not scrum Uh, there we go. So, uh, a great channel. Uh, so that's the first thing I wanted to say. Uh, the second thing I wanted to let you know, um, and this is mainly, I think, probably for uh, people in the UK, uh, but about 12 years ago, I, when I actually looked it up, it's quite a long time ago, um, for about three or four years, ending up about 12 years ago, I used to blog uh, every week whenever the UK version of The Apprentice uh, was on. And I would talk about the episode and what people had done well, what they hadn't done well, and what we could learn from it from a just general management leadership point of view. And I got quite a massive following on my blog just for those uh, articles. And then the show changed and I changed and I kind of let it all go. Um, <laughs> almost in jest, uh, a friend of mine uh, mentioned that Apprentice was back. And why, on, why don't I blog about it? And then when I talked to my daughter about it, who's doing business studies uh, for her GCSE. She was quite keen as well. We've been watching um, on catch up with 
previous series. Um, and so we decided that I would resume the blog, but instead of putting it on my website, because it's not relevant to the project management website, and I don't currently blog on my um, Mike Clayton website, thought we'd put it on LinkedIn. And the other innovation was that I would do my piece, and then at the end there would be a very short piece from my daughter uh, saying what she thought, what she learned from the show. And we thought it would be interesting to see if we picked up on the same things or different things some weeks. Um, so if you have a, uh, a little look, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is the second article that I posted. Um, the first one, which I, n I numbered 18.0, was the kind of pre-show uh, article, which was about the application process and how you can apply for a job what you can learn from the applications that the candidates made um, or the questions they were asked. Now, what I've, one of the rules I've set myself, which I think is quite important, is that uh, we're not going to be criticising the candidates, not least because the show is edited to make the candidates probably look a bit more foolish than they really are, um, to highlight their conflicts and stuff. Uh, and also, I set myself the rule that I wouldn't, um, uh, wouldn't put any spoilers there. Which would mean, firstly, that it wouldn't spoil it for anyone who did want to watch the show. And secondly, of course, uh, you don't have to watch the show to learn the lesson. So um, this one I, I wrote about a communication impoverished environment and what that means. Um, but um, I've actually uh, quoted Lord Sugar, except instead of telling you whether he said, well done, gentlemen, or well done, ladies, I've just kind of left it uh, for you to find out uh, which side won. And so if you're interested in The Apprentice, if you're interested in learning business lessons, and remember that they call the team leaders project managers, and so sometimes there's project management lessons to be learned. I think, um, interestingly, I think the lessons that I've drawn out of the pre-show uh, article and the post uh, and this episode one article, both uh, are uh, relevant to project managers. So um, do take a look at those. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to just mention is, is that not all of you will, I suspect, be on my newsletter uh, list. Um, I should probably uh, grab a link if you want to be. Bear with me. Um, so, resources. Come on. No. Come on. Where are you? Uh, Lotus templates. Resources. Sometimes think I should make it a little bit easier to find my newsletter. Sign up. Just realised it's on the front page and I forgot about it. Um, so if you're not on my newsletter list, you should be, um, and I'll post a link to that in the chat. But uh, what I, one of the things I said a couple of weeks ago to my newsletter list is I made a decision over Christmas New Year um, that I wanted to do more coaching and mentoring this year, but I wanted to do it for free. Um, I've, there's no secret, uh, I hit 60, I am kind of winding down, um, uh, slowly, uh, and over the course of the next five or six years, but I am uh, thinking now about perhaps giving back uh, more than perhaps I put in, uh, put into the community in terms of um, giving back to the community rather than uh, go searching for paid work and more and more paid work. I want to be doing less paid work and more pro bono work. So in my newsletter, I kind of announced that uh, if anybody n had a case to make uh, for free mentoring, because I tend uh, at times I get like five or six requests a week um, at peak times, but most weeks there is a kind of request. Well, I'm going to take more of those, but I always ask people uh, to make the case, why do you? Why would you benefit from mentoring, and why do you? you know, what's the case for me doing that for free for you? Um, because there are people out there who charge for it and make their living from it. Um, I do charge clients for it, but I know a lot of my audience are uh, not yet employed, or they're in parts of the world where, frankly, the rates that I can charge here in the UK are astonishingly high uh, and, and not affordable. So, um, if you're watching this and you think actually at some point in the next year I'm going to perhaps ban it benefit from a free coaching call free mentoring session um, then do get in touch with me but uh, the rule is that you have to tell me why you think uh, you will benefit from it and uh, you know what because then I can judge whether it's a good fit um, and 
it is a proposal process in the sense that uh, I need to manage quantity. I'm probably aiming to do about one a week. I've done a, uh, uh, I think four already this year, and they've been marvellously diverse. Uh, someone trying to cope with a very new, different project role. Uh, someone, uh, a couple of people actually trying to get back into employment, but for very different reasons. Um, so let me know if that's something you want to do. So that's uh, that's the announcement out of the way. Let's see who we've got on the call. We've got Nicola, of course. Um, Nicola, good friend to the channel. Um, has missed, I think, uh, a, a couple of these uh, live streams, but it's good to have you back, Nicola. Uh, we've got Digital Name uh, from India. Welcome. Uh, Hambo Gumbo uh, from uh, the UK. So another good friend to the channel. Uh, here a lot. Ian Waters is another name I, I kind of recognise. I think you've been on the call a number of times, uh, Ian, uh, from Leighton Buzzard. That's also in the UK. Um, influential PMO, not a million miles away from Leighton Buzzard, I think. Uh, Chesham. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so uh, good to see you, uh, Stuart, here. So Stuart's another channel I recommend, um, Influential PMO. Did a very good video uh, the other day about what is project management. Um, Clearly, uh, shouldn't really be allowed to compete with titles that I've done. Um, uh, what is peer project management? It's a very niche topic. I don't know how he came up with such a, an, an original idea. Uh, must have copied my idea. Uh, but do have a look at that. Stuart, do feel free to paste a link to your channel um, in there because you have, have got that moderator spanner thing, uh, which means that you can post a link. Um, and then Game Center from Azerbaijan. Fantastic. Uh, so we'll, well, I'm going to book that as Asia. I know it's kind of in that kind of no, you know, midland between Europe and uh, and Asia, but I'm going to plug, plug that as Asia because um, we've got plenty of people from Europe. Um, so three continents so far, Asia, Europe and North America. Fantastic. So, oh, by the way, uh, as regulars know, I love to take questions. So uh, if you have a question, do post it in the chat and I will try and answer it. But as I've done a number of times um, recently, I've got a kind of prepared presentation for you. Um, they seem to seem to do better um, and I think it's I can do a lot of stuff off the cuff but I need a lot of questions and a lot of questions I need a lot of people on the calls and you know you're working people um, and I'm not doing this at the weekend and I'm not doing it Friday evening when people have some time so I know it's a, a bit of a stretch for some of you to actually come on the call so I really do uh, do appreciate it especially um, Digital name in India, uh, where it must be, it must be half past ten. Uh, and Azerbaijan, I'm guessing it's kind of, kind of evening time, nine-ish, eight-ish. So, uh, thank you very much for turning up. And of course, uh, North America, I guess it must be midday. So, real working time. So, I'm going to cut straight uh, to the chase and head across to the presentation now. Um, so the presentation I've got for you today is uh, PM to CEO, and this is actually by request um, of my community. Um, I, in my newsletters, weekly newsletters, I try to find something interesting to say that will give real value to project managers, something to think about, some new knowledge. And uh, I talked about an article that I read in Harvard Business Review. Uh, whoops, wrong button. I need to click that one, don't I? Um, and that article was called The Leap from Project Manager to CEO is Hard But Not Impossible. And, uh, and, I, and what I said at the end of that is that this article suggested nine things we need to do to make it much more likely that we as project managers could become chief executives, CEOs. And as a throwaway remark, I said, if you think that would make a good live stream, if you'd like to hear that as a live stream, then please just let me know by clicking this link. And I've had the la I had the largest response to anything uh, in my newsletter uh, in the last six years uh, from that request. Lots of people, where are you now? He asks. Uh, there's about uh, 20 odd people on the call at the moment. Uh, not all odd, I hope. Um, if you join the call, by the way, um, do say hi in the chat. It's good to know that who you are and where you are. 
Um, anyway, I, I, I invited people to say they w whether they would like to hear a bit more about that and my thoughts about how we could develop those skills. And lots of people said yes. So because of that, we're doing this live stream. And that's a good lesson for me because quite often I'm thinking, what can I deliver as a live stream that would be really interesting, really entertaining and really valuable to project managers? And yes, sometimes things happen in the project management world and I want to comment on it. Um, but my plan for this year is I will only do a live stream when I have something interesting to talk about. So if I think of something interesting, uh, I will do a live stream. And if anyone of you in my community has a video uh, idea, an idea, a topic that you think would make a really good live stream, then just let me know. And if I agree with you uh, and it's something that excites me and I think it will excite my audience, then that's what I'll talk about. Uh, what have we got here? Influential PMO Stuart says, you've done a video on what is project management too? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think probably every project management YouTuber has done a video with that title. Um, and then uh, we've got Femi Shaba joined us. Hi, Mike from Abuja in Nigeria. Oh, our fourth continent of the day. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, we've got someone from Africa. Great to have you here, Femi. Uh, welcome. Anyway, so um, first thing I would say is that there is a link in the description to this article by Antonio Nieto Rodriguez. And that's my guess at how to pronounce his name. Um, I'll also uh, just quickly grab it and paste it into uh, the chat as well for your convenience. But don't download it now. Um, Harvard Business Review website, carefully controlled. You can, I think it used to be you could have five articles a month and now, then it went down to three. I think it's now one article a month, but this one's worth it. Project managers who want to build a, a, a long-term career where you get to the top, this one is worth it. Um, so I do have a look at that. Um, so let's have a look at uh, a summary of what it says because I've, I've asked you not to download it. So um, I'm going to just uh, flick over to there and let's have a look at our summary. So the first first thing is that it points out that project managers in theory are some of the best candidates to become CEOs in their organizations. The reason uh, he says this is because we have broad skill sets. We are good at leadership. We're good at making things happen. Uh, we're particularly good at new initiatives and all of that. So on the face of it, we should be great candidates for CEO. However, uh, what he observes is that in reality, CEOs hardly ever become, um, uh, sorry, project managers hardly ever become CEOs. Most CEOs do not come from project management uh, route. Uh, rather nice coinage uh, from um, Nieto Rodriguez. He, he describes this as the Gantt ceiling, um, I guess, as a kind of play on glass ceiling. Um, then goes on to give two kind of examples of fictional people um, and talks about Sarah's struggle and John's dilemma. Sarah's application was turned down due to a lack of a broader strategic experience. Um, as project managers, we tend to work at the bottom end of strategy, implementing a piece of strategy. And as we move to program managers, it's a bigger piece, uh, but it's still a piece of strategy, not the whole organizational strategy. And, and the other kind of mini case study he gives is uh, suggests that John struggled to convince stakeholders uh, that he possessed the qualities required to lead an entire organization. We are leaders. We lead small teams, but that's very different to leading a, a large organization. Um, and I, I think there's uh, also a nice uh, uh, phrase where he says that actually there's not a well-defined path from um, a senior project manager or, or, or a PMO into that kind of CEO position. And so um, we don't get to lead more and more people um, as operational people do. Um, and then uh, it looks at what actually is the kind of career path that CEOs uh, and he says that CEOs must provide direction, make strategic decisions and inspire their teams. 
And we all do we all do that as project managers, but we provide direction at a lower level. We make smaller level strategic decisions and we rely on our sponsors and our boards and our clients to really ratify those. And we do need to inspire our teams, but our teams are small, typically. Uh, the biggest team I managed as a project manager was probably about 80. That's, you know, that's not a huge business. Um, they gain exposure to diverse organizational functions and are often international experience. Now, project managers, yes, if you, if you design your career, you can work in different functions through your career, particularly, by the way, if you go into contracting or if you're going to consulting, project management consulting. And it, often international experience is another thing that is particularly easy if you're in a consulting world. Um, but then, you know, I worked in consulting. Um, I did uh, a project in Germany, a project in the Netherlands, quick trip to Italy. Um, but that's it for my international experience working in the UK. Um, I could have done more. I got offered a job in Japan. Um, I could have sought uh, some sort of placement, but it, it's, it's hard. Uh, whereas if you go into a big multinational, that's part of your career plan. Um, this equips uh, them, CEO candidates, with a holistic understanding of how business operates and relevant expertise uh, to the organization's strategic needs. And we don't really get that. We don't get to see how the business operates because we're always seeing a part of the business um, from the perspective of we're trying to change it. Um, the career of a project manager he says it's often characterized by a more confined linear project pro progression from small project well from a project team member to a project team leader to a project manager of small projects to large projects maybe into a pmo role and perhaps a senior pmo role maybe into a program role maybe into a contracting role but it does tend to be quite linear so um he identifies four challenges uh, for project managers progressing to a CEO role uh, for reasons why we often fail to get there. And the first is that th there isn't this clear path. Um, secondly, we have a specialized experience. We don't get placements that are designed to give us a breadth of experience. Um, he also says there's actually limited role models. There are, you know, there are countless examples of Operational, man uh, operational managers um, and finance managers and even procurement people and HR professionals. But actually, there are relatively few high profile examples and therefore role models uh, for project managers going into CEO roles. Um, and he also talks about the difference between a tactical um, versus an executive mindset. And this is really about thinking that we're implementing something someone's given us to implement rather than thinking about actually what does need to change in this business before i move on let's see what's in the chat nicola said that's interesting can we think of a ceo as being prime portfolio manager of an organization in one sense i think we can um, so clearly does hambo uh, and i would never disagree with hambo because we always seem to be aligned um <laughs> But actually it's something I do, do plan to talk about uh, in one of the uh, suggestions. So as, as I suggested, we've got nine things, that nine sort of um, attributes we need to boost. That's the terminology that uh, Nieto Rodriguez um, uses. And I think one of them, um, this idea of portfolio management as a role is a, is a good routine. Um, so yes, um, then uh, Peter Shuk Day, uh, uh, 10 years project manager, energy industry in Nigeria. Welcome. Uh, and uh, Dawn. Uh, hello, Dawn, wherever you are. Um, he does very helpfully cite some examples, some exceptions to the rule that project managers don't make um, CEOs. And these are big names uh, in, in big name organizations. Um, I have actually a friend who was a project manager who worked for me went on to lead some big projects um, at Deloitte and then to go into another consultancy and lead projects there. He became chief executive of, of, of that consulting business. But I think consulting is a... <sighs> Consultants often are project managers. Project managers are in a consultancy business, so therefore just one of, you know, a big class of the cons 
consultancy group and therefore it's quite likely that a lot of consultancy is going to be led either by specialist project managers or by people with project management experience so i think um you know my friend charles who i interviewed on the channel charles vivian we talked about teams um i think that's not a good example because i think consulting is a special case but siemens hard technology business uh an industry business uh, lego consumer business um ford big auto manufacturer and microsoft um it's a familiar name but i can't place them uh and then um the bill and melinda gates foundation charitable uh, and uh ngo kind of funding organization so five great examples of project managers who went from being skilled project managers to leading huge organizations and and doing so very well so it can happen and that's the good news for us i've realized that uh I probably shouldn't have allowed um, my face to cover that up. So uh, there we go. Uh, so um, that said, let's just uh, go back to this and um, look at the nine attributes to boost your CEO potential. And, I, and, and uh, I'm leaning very 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 heavily on this article in Harvard Business Review by Antonio Nieto Rodriguez he in turn uh, here leans on uh, a blog uh, in uh, on the website of uh, Russell Reynolds Associates um, which is an executive search company who did an analysis of the kind of characteristics that distinguish uh, CEO can effective CEO candidates from uh, the others. Um, I'll paste a link to that article, um, and it's just a web. It's just a web page, so um, you'll be able to get that. It's also in the chat. Of course, not, sorry, it's also in the description uh, below the video, of course. But um, I'll put it in the chat uh, too. Oh, I have two hundred and eight out of two hundred characters. Okay, I'm going to take off the name of the business to make that fit there we go um, so you can have a look for yourself but they identify uh, the following attributes forward thinking calculated risk taking a bias towards action optimism constructively tough minded efficient reader of people measured emotion pragmatic inclusiveness and willingness to trust so what I want to do is to take each of those and give you my take on what they mean for us as project managers and how we acquire those skills so um, Nieto Rodriguez uh, does a good job of explaining his perceptions of why we have some of those skills and where the gaps are I want to kind of go that step further and look at how we can actually fill in those gaps So forward thinking, uh, what's this about? This is uh, about recognizing that project planning and then delivery is kind of forward oriented, but it's not forward enough. Organizational strategy looks a lot further forward um, and looks at a much bigger picture. So we need to kind of go beyond what the project thinks of as long term. You might be working on a one, two, three, four year project, maybe even a five, six year program. But fundamentally, organizational strategy, we need to be thinking about the whole business on that five to 10 year time scale. Um, so this is the long term for the organization. So what skills do we need to acquire and how do we need to acquire them? Well, the first, I guess, is bit and this is in no order, I guess. I've just kind of got a few little notes here. Um, the first, excuse me, is business acumen. We need to develop that sense of understanding how business works in particular the kind of businesses that we want to one day be leading um, and I think the way that we get that is to widen our uh, engagement with business knowledge as project managers you are all very much adept at seeking out project management knowledge new project management thinking new ideas so you trawl LinkedIn you trawl YouTube, blogs, articles, magazines, journals, books, you read and, and watch and listen to podcasts about project management and that boosts your skills. Well, now you need to broaden that to understand the business world uh, 
um, in the widest sense and in, and also to I guess zoom into uh, the part of the business world where you may want to lead and that will give you more knowledge you also need to be putting your hand up in your organization for roles that are more business oriented and less project oriented you need to be trying to sit in on program level and portfolio level that's that word that uh, nicola suggested um and strategic uh decision making discussions when you go out and meet stakeholders within the business then ask for tours ask for explainers find out what they do take every opportunity to learn about the businesses that you're working in and that was one of the joys of being a consultant of course i forgot to mention i also worked in hungary um like in, when i was working in hungary uh, i was working in the telecom sector but one of the major clients of our client was coca-cola and we got to go to a coca-cola bottling plant and it was fantastic to learn about how the the um, Coca-Cola uh, manufacture bottling and distribution and logistics works um, so take those opportunities don't just think oh well you know uh, I've got to wander around this warehouse but it'll be over soon wander around the warehouse and learn as much as you can and, and then start networking again as project managers we become adept at networking with other project professionals we look for mentoring opportunities coaching opportunities um, building the relationships which will take us from job to job and enhance our project skills. Now, network at the top levels of your organization. Start to find out what accountants uh, and finance professionals do, what procurement professionals do, what HR professionals do, what logistics professionals do. Understand the different parts of the business by meeting lots of people and talking to them and, and understanding their world. That way, you can start to think whenever you are discussing a new potential project or working on a project, you can start to think of its context in the wider organization, how it fits into the business strategy, not just because that's helpful to deliver in a project, but because it's helpful to understanding the organizational structure, the, org the way the organization works, and that will give you a deeper understanding. And then work your way up through the layers of the portfolio from the project you're working in to the understanding some of the other projects around you to understanding the program to understanding the portfolio and i do uh, i do believe that um there will at some point be chief uh, portfolio officers or uh, chief value officers or uh, chief pmo officers at board level so when that starts to happen and you get c-suite members who are project professionals i think that will open up a, a load of possibilities for us the next thing that um both um uh nieto rodriguez and um russell reynolds associates identify is the need for calculated risk taking now what calculated what they mean by that is as project managers, it is a large part of our job to be risk averse and to manage risks actively and to look to reduce risk as much as possible. It is, however, part of the job of our client, sponsor, steering group, project board to look at risks from a strategic point of view and to decide what our appetite is for risk and to perhaps determine that some risks are worth taking. As professionals, we need we're going to move towards a more strategic more ceo style role we need to look at case studies um, of how taking risks has really benefited the organization so that we can understand where it is appropriate to increase our own risk tolerance and to be more innovative more creative we need to understand how complexity works we need to track our own personal decision making when we take when we make a decision we are taking a risk because every decision carries with it the risk that it is the wrong choice people who work in the field of decision making and train in the field of decision making talk about decision logs the idea that after every decision you have taken you write about what your options were 
what your thought processes were, how you narrowed the options and the reasons why you chose the option that you did. And then afterwards you go back and you write up for that decision how things turned out and you look to see whether the assumptions you made were sound, whether the reasoning was sound, whether you can understand why either the risk, uh, either the decision turned out to be a right decision or a wrong decision. Now, what we're trying to do is to improve the quality of our decision making. We're trying to make good decisions, better decisions. A good decision is not necessarily a right decision. It is a decision that has more chance of being right in the absence of certainty. Um, you, you can't know at the point you make a decision whether it's the right decision, but you can know uh, whether you have done a good job of the decision making process. And keeping a decision log and recording and reflecting on each decision you make in business um, will help you to make better decisions. And that will now allow you to take bigger risks in a more calculated way. This is not about being reckless. Now, there is an obvious link, I think, between calculated risk taking and a bias towards forward action, because, of course, what we now need to do is to start looking at the not just the not just the bias towards action that we have as project managers, which says that, you know, we get things done, but it's about seeing how the implications of what we're doing ripple into the future and have profound effects on the future. So we need to look at the long term effects of our actions and our decisions. Um, we need to avoid being impulsive whilst being determined to act and to make change happen. Um, and this is about determining what the right course of action is, what the right future is, and the best way to get there. And again, to come back to the idea of portfolio management, of course, the role of a portfolio management process starts with finding the portfolio, not the right portfolio, because you can't know that, but a good portfolio decision process that gives you the balance of projects and initiatives and programs that will not only take you to where you want to be if the future works out the way you expect but give you that strategic flexibility so that if events mean the future looks different to your expectations you are still prepared for it and so we need to act to create all those multiple futures and I think um, the other thing that will be really useful for us as project managers is if we want to make action happen we need to do it through people. And of course, one of the critiques of project managers compared to operational track CEO candidates is that we don't manage such large teams uh, as they do. So you do need to work to perfect your day to day leadership. How do you lead individuals? How do you delegate work? How do you get things done? Your implementation skills. So this should be right in our wheelhouse, but really focus on 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 that. I also think there's a link between calculated risk taking, bias to, towards action and optimism. And the way that I see this is to recognize that the definition of risk is uncertainty that can affect outcome. And that uncertainty is, sorry, that outcome, I misspoke there, that outcome can be either an adverse outcome or a positive outcome. Our risk can be a threat or an opportunity. And optimism is not about glass half full optimism, which says, yeah, well, this glass is half full, whilst other people might say it's half empty. That's kind of Planglossian optimism for, for those of you who um, know your uh, French classics, Candide, um, in, con in, the, in the book Candide by... Um, Someone help me, Voltaire. Um, <laughs> in Condide, there's a character called Dr. Pangloss who says everything is will turn out for the best in the best of all possible worlds. Um, this isn't the best of all possible worlds and things don't always turn out for the best. However, good optimism is about having confidence in our abilities, not arrogance, but confidence in our abilities, having confidence in the resources we've got available to us, the people, the, the skills we've acquired and our ability to learn and develop and the people around us to learn and develop. It's about resilience. Optimism is about 
knowing that I'm a resilient person, the people around me are resilient and I will persevere and they will persevere and I can create a, a motivating environment where people want to be resilient and want to persevere. I also think optimism is about deliberately looking for the opportunities whilst not ignoring the threats and not minimising them either. You know, if, if, if the house is burning down, you don't sort of smile and say, well, that'll be fine. It won't be, not for the house uh, that's burning down and the people who live in it. But it is about saying, you know, we know how to rebuild houses. We know how to rebuild lives. Clearly, there are going to be problems and clearly we need to work through them. Um, so we need to cultivate that optimism. We, I think, are good as project managers and as leaders of coming across as optimistic to our teams um, and inspiring them. But we need to understand where that comes from and we need to find it in ourselves because the challenges we will face as, as business leaders rather than project leaders are going to be that much bigger. And therefore, we need to have deeper reserves of resilience and, and deeper abilities to persevere. Uh, right. Uh, what have we got here? Hamburg Gumble says, I use the term future FOMO for planning. Uh, and he clarifies fear of missing out. A future fear of missing out for planning. Um, so let me see if I can make sense of that for myself. I use the term future fear of my... So basically putting in place what you need so that you don't have to fear that you will have got it wrong. I like that. Yeah, I like that into a lot. Thank you. Uh, next up is, I think we're halfway through now. Um, yeah, there's five, there's nine. So uh, the, uh, this is the kind of middle one. Um, so it, they talk about being constructively tough minded. Um, so this is about developing a thick skin, of course, uh, but not being insensitive to uh, situations and to people, and to people's concerns. Uh, that would be foolish. Uh, we need to be empathetic, uh, clearly. But uh, we do need to accept that there will be setbacks, there will be criticisms of us. And in fact, we should encourage feedback. That's kind of what I'm trying to il illustrate in the, in the uh, slot on the slide. Um, that we should encourage feedback about our performance and we should have a bias toward action on that feedback. If, if the feedback tells us about changes we can make, we should be concerned to make those changes and to to make our professional practice better. Um, to do that, of course, we need to be good at reflecting on the feedback, which means we need to be good at listening and asking questions, not countering uh, any perceived criticisms. Just take them and deal with them. And I think also constructively tough minded must mean being prepared to do what is difficult, even if it is uncomfortable, do what is right rather than what is easy. Um, and again, as project managers, you know, we have this clear idea in our minds, I think, uh, about the importance of integrity. And I think that plays into it, doing what's um, doing uh, the right things as well as doing things right. But here, I think we're, we're taking on board that um, the higher we get up or higher we aspire to climb up the corporate ladder, um, the more we are going to have to um, do difficult things. And therefore, to prepare ourselves for that, I think that the most valuable thing you can do is to look to take on, deliberately take on demanding roles, roles that you know are going to stretch you and are going to require you to do difficult, sometimes uncomfortable things, both in and outside of work. And this is a theme I'm going to come back to again, I'm sure with others, but volunteering. Volunteering is a great way to face difficult, demanding, unpleasant things and to learn to grit your teeth and to do them. Um, and it's very easy to think when uh, it's it's tight you know, when you decide oh I want to do some volunteering you think well what am I interested in what do I like doing and to volunteer in that and that's great if you're doing volunteering because you want to do something that makes you feel good and 
is a, an appropriate pastime that's pleasurable. If your volunteering is targeted on making you a better person, then that means not picking things that you like doing, that you think you will enjoy, but doing things you think will really stretch you and challenge you and that you may not enjoy. For example, if you're one of those people who really loves nature and the environment, then it will be very easy and the outdoors, it will be very easy to volu do volunteering um, in conservation work, on wildlife conservation or plant conservation or environment conservation. But maybe what you really need is to volunteer to work with people with disabilities. If you're someone who likes working with children because uh, children excite you, 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 you love their energy, you know you've got a lot to give to them, you've got a lot of patience for working with children, then maybe you need to be someone who's working with elders and older people uh, who have a very different energy and something very different to give, but also very different demands that may be uncomfortable for you to serve. Next up is the need to be an efficient reader of people. Um, and that's something I've talked a lot about on this channel. I've got probably a couple of live streams about it uh, as well. So I won't talk at length about this, but um, things to study here are things like listening skills, study psychology. Uh, regulars will know that probably on every other live stream I mentioned that uh, all project managers should make a study of psychology. Read about psychology, watch videos about psychology, learn about psychology. Um, conflict resolution is a good thing to learn about. I have a course on uh, managing conflict in uh, project environments. Um, I should probably find a link for you, shouldn't I? Let me just do that. That's not the one. Bear with me a moment. I'll grab that link. Here we are. Copy link. So conflict in projects. So if you're interested in managing conflict in projects, I have a, oh, that didn't work. I'm trying to chat, talk and type at the same time. Um, yeah, I have. A, if you're interested in learning about managing conflict, then I have a full course on that. Um, do take a look at it. If, by the way, you want to support the channel, um, a great way to do that is to buy a course because then you get something for your support, and so do I. Um, if you want to buy me a coffee or anything, feel free. Uh, or super chat, of course, uh, while we're on the platform. Um, what else? Emotion intelligence. I did definitely did a live stream about emotion intelligence. That did I definitely do a live stream about emotional intelligence? Ah, oh, no, I did a whole course on emotional intelligence on my other channel, didn't I? Uh, yes, so the Management Courses YouTube channel has a whole course on, um, on uh, emotional intelligence. Let's have, a, let's have a little look at that. Um, so if we go to here and we go to management courses uh, there we go so this channel here management courses is my other channel um, some people I, I I'm guess don't know that I've got this second channel if you look under playlists um, then where are we Here we go. There's an emotional intelligence play. play Let's pause that uh, playlist. In fact, the best way to look at it is by clicking. There. So yeah, there's a whole whole load of videos about emotional intelligence, which, if you're interested in the topic, you can learn about. Um, right. Back to slides. Um, what else? Um, certainly, I think to practice your efficient reader of people, people skills, um, team membership and team leadership. The more you can be part of a team, the more you can work with people, the more you can lead teams, the better. And that's another reason to get into volunteering because you will 
working in different types of teams with different types of people. Take opportunities to try to influence and persuade people. So a lot of project managers not keen on presenting. Uh, not keen on presenting business cases, not keen on presenting uh, review reports, whatever. But it's a chance to practice your communication skills and in particular your influence and persuading skills. So I would very much advocate that. Um, and take the opportunity to negotiate as well. Um, to negotiate well, you need to be uh, an efficient uh, reader of people. And this all links very nicely. I don't I think one of the things they kind of miss out in their list, but I think is sits well here is this idea of political acumen. We need to gain that kind of political acumen to read political situations, which is all about people. Right, let's go back to anything coming through, nothing coming through on the uh, chat, I don't think. There we go. Uh, a special mention for stand-up comedy and improv for reading people. Yeah, if you if you are into improv, I didn't know you were into improv, Hambo Gumbel. Um, if you are able to do that and into that, that's a great way to learn to read people. Uh, fantastic. Um, next, measured emotion. Now, one of the things I've always said is the master skill for pro professionals in any professional discipline is self-control. Uh, so this is how I'm going to choose to really interpret measured emotion as being about self-control um, and to help you to develop this I think mindfulness exercises uh, stress management um, just simple awareness exercises become aware of your situation become aware observe what's going on become more a better observer of people which means speaking less and watching more um, for some people meditation is a big help uh, and if you've never tried it, it can be a, a brilliant uh, thing to do. Um, and anything you can do long term to build your resilience and to reduce your stress levels will really help you well to um, be much more measured in your emotional responses. So that's that one. Next is pragmatic inclusiveness. Um, I think I read this and immediately I thought this is about diverse teams I, and I couldn't quite figure out what the pragmatic bit meant. Um, this is about only having um, an inclusive diverse team where it suits you. Um, I, I don't, I hope not. Um, I think as project managers, we have to get experience of multiple cultures. Clearly, we need to bring as many different voices and personalities and styles and backgrounds and histories and interpretations of the world into our team. Um, but I also think that we ought to go out into the world and get experience of as many different cultures as we can and as many different subcultures within a culture. Um, you may not be able to travel to other parts of the world for whatever reason. Um, many people can't, uh, or certainly not frequently, but there are likely to be lots of subcultures within your, within arm's reach of your uh, office uh, or your workplace or your home. So learn about those people. Um, cultivate a sense of belonging and inclusiveness in your team. It, make everybody feel not just welcome, not just that they belong, but they are valued and that the team will adapt itself to them as much as they you're asking them to adapt to the team. I think a an environment where it says everyone has to adapt to the culture of the team is at risk of losing the real value of the diversity. A team that adapts itself to the different ways of being of the people in it is going to be much more powerful. Get out and meet different people. Um, and again, back to volunteering. It, that gives you the opportunity to go into different contexts and to meet very different people because volunteering attracts people with lots of different backgrounds. Um, and uh, I can't read my writing. So I'm not going to spend ages trying to. Um, 
The last one is a willingness to trust. So yes, we need to be trustworthy. But interesting, pick up on, they don't say you need to be trustworthy because frankly, duh, you know, this is not, this is not brilliant. Uh, rocket science to say that in order to get to a CEO role you need to be trustworthy um, but for those of you who are not familiar with it the the, the trust model um, of Maester Galliford and Green um, I think is the best one and it says to be trusted you need to be reliable you need to be credible you need to be relatable get on with people and you need to be generous in the sense that uh, people must think that you do things for the right reasons, not out of self-interest. Um, but you also need to learn to trust people. And this kind of goes back, I think, because we, we talked about the need to read people, become an efficient reader of people. You can't trust people unless you can read them. Um, but you do need to, if you like, have an affirmative bias, uh, a bias that says, until proven otherwise, I will assume this person is trustworthy, because let's face it, most people are. So this is not saying if someone acts without integrity, is dishonest, is lying, is cheating, you should carry on and trust them. This is actually being willing to trust people and, until you learn otherwise. And my tip for doing this is to practice delegation. Delegate more and bigger than you would ever have thought. And ramp up your delegation as project managers we spend a lot of our time allocating work to teams. We don't spend a lot of time delegating our work to other people. Delegate th to the level that it sort of scares you and learn to allow people to fail safely. I don't believe that people learn half as much from success as they do from failure. So your job in delegating is not to ensure that they do not fail. It is to ensure that if they fail, they will fail safely and they will not harm themselves, harm the organization, harm the client, harm you um, in any way, um, but that they will learn. And so create opportunities for people to fail. And for, for me, this means creating a project that is as efficient and effective and smooth running as it can be. So you have time and you have contingency in your plan for people to get things wrong and trust people and you will be surprised how rarely they do make those mistakes uh, and that is a probably the most difficult suggestion I've made in terms of exercises uh, today um, the, the thought of actually trusting people to the point of failure um, but do it practice delegating more than you would ever have thought to delegate so that is my take on a brilliant article um, but there's more um, I've got something else to talk to you about um, of interest uh, another article to introduce you to which I think you should be reading which I'm not going to talk about but I'm going to make a case for you to go out and download it and read it uh, if you're interested in becoming a CEO <laughs> and you're interested in stuff um, but before I do I'm just gonna say that the offer for today um, is actually 20% off uh, my course on how to develop Gravitas because, of course, a CEO needs Gravitas. They need a sense of uh, authority, influence, presence, maybe even charisma, but Gravitas is that kind of weight. And so um, there's a link in the description, as there always is, um, and I'm about to paste uh, one into the chat. Um, but this link is not just a link to the course. Um, it will get you $20 off the course if you use this link to buy my course on how to develop Gravitas. The other article I want to point you at is an article that appeared on the McKinsey and Company uh, website. Um, I think it was early January, possibly late December. Um, some of you, I am sure, um, bought my um, artificial intelligence and project management uh, briefing product. Um, that's uh, a document that, uh, sorry, that's a, a kind of, it's structured as a course, but it's actually a, um, just a series of modules. It contains all my content on uh, 
um, artificial intelligence in project management let me flip over to um, the screen and show you the link to it is on the home page of my website let me just grab that link um, if you subscribe to my newsletter you'll know I advertised the start of January that after a year I was going to put up the price because I spent a couple of days over the Christmas period really improving it further um, every week I add more con more links to interesting articles and podcasts and videos that you can watch to learn about the interface of artificial intelligence project management um, so do have a look at that it's $37 uh, for a kind of lifetime um, there's lots of great videos including one from uh, the influential PMO who he who uh, lent me gave me access to one of his videos to uh, include in the pack um, so each weekend I kind of go through all the new content that's come across my desk on artificial intelligence and project management and that intersection and one of the things that came across my desk was this um, it's actually it's not really an article it's it's what is it it's probably about uh, 90 odd pages um, a 90 page PDF document about eight priorities for today's CEOs and I put it into that um, briefing pack because the first of them is generative AI and a lot of them are technology based even though they're not actually um, AI um, but I thought you if you're interested in uh, what's going on in this at the biggest tier of uh, strategy I told you to be reading about this stuff this is a great download um, and again it the link is in the description and I'm just about if I can make my mouse behave itself uh, to paste the link into the chat as well so let me just grab that um, this will take you to a page where they summarize the uh, article uh, if you you can register on the McKinsey site for free and once you've signed up you can download the PDF to say it's actually I've seen it in front of me uh, on my notes it's 95 pages um, and a big chunk of that I'm guessing around about an eighth of it so probably about 10 10 12 pages is about um, generative AI and uh, uh, what's happening there and I think that makes a nice link back to what our concern from primary concern as a, as a group was um, last year and to further make the case for why you should get it if you are interested in AI and project management there are two fantastic graphics uh, which I'll put on the screen now uh, oh, let's use this one so you can see the whole thing um, these graphics uh, kind of talk about the how generative AI sits in the customer journey and how it is part of your tech stack so if you kind of want to get a sense of how all this stuff fits in how generative AI fits into um, corporations and and um, big enterprise enterprises and organizations this is great thing. Um, the last thing I want to uh, mention before we go I'm gonna press the wrong button there we go um, is my book smart to wise I mentioned it a lot I've, a couple of times last year uh, this is my favorite of all the books I wrote and then sods law uh, came along and the publisher decided to pull out of the uh, business uh, book market shortly after it was published and so very few people got a chance to buy it it became unavailable um, and so um, as a response I contacted the uh, publishers and said can I have my rights back can you um, reassign the rights back to me to the book so that I can publish it myself and after some negotiation here it is this is the second edition um, to prove there is a difference you may not be able to see it on screen but that there that there is the first edition and that there is the second edition um, uh, so slightly different covers um, second edition has a little bit of extra content in it but all the same content plus a little more this is published um, only available uh, through Amazon um, but it is available as a nice hardback as was the original um, and of course as a, paper, as a Kindle um, uh, ebook um, this I think is a perfect companion piece if you want to, something to read or you want to support the channel uh, to this uh, live stream because it is about moving from being seen by your peers as smart uh, to being seen by them as wise and of course that has to be part of the journey from project manager to CEO so there we go I think uh, 
what we really need to do now is to put up the last slide and see if there are any questions. So um, it's been around an hour. Uh, thank you all very much for listening. I think most of you are still here. I think we hit a peak of about 30, 30 35 people, which is great, um, and usually get uh, 100 or so uh, in the first day uh, f following up and watching the replay. So uh, any questions from anyone before I wind up the stream? and uh, say goodbye. What I'm not going to do today is tell you what the next uh, live stream is going to be and when it's going to be, because as I said at the beginning, my plan for this year is to live stream when I've got an interesting subject. Either I come across something I want to talk about that I think is a real value to my community like you, um, or if one of you, one of my community comes to me and says, Mike, could you do a live stream on this topic? And if I think that's suitable and interesting to me, then we'll do that. So um, they will usually, I think, be on the first Tuesday of the month, but I'm not going to guarantee through this year that there will be one every first Tuesday of the month. Um, so unless you keep throwing great ideas at me and you know how to contact me, you, there's, there's lots of different ways to get in touch with me. So just drop me a line through any means. Um, Hambo Gumbo says, Hambo Gumbo says, uh, any overlooked Aspects of skill development from PM to CEO, question mark. I guess that's a good question for you. Uh, uh, as I said, I think the, the two that they missed um, explicitly were political acumen and uh, uh, executive presence. Um, I think I said that. Uh, but what do you think? Nicola replies, ha ha, I was just about to ask you what your live stream would be, uh, so I won't. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what, I, I, yes, there's something covering. I think the next. I was just about to ask you what the next live stream will be. Yeah. Um, don't know. But Nikolai, if you've got any ideas, um, then let me know. Uh, but it's open to everyone. Um, just get in touch with me. Some people do from time to time uh, anyway, and I look forward to your communication. And a reminder, you know, if you're uh, for whatever reason you need a little bit of coaching or mentoring but you don't have the budget to pay for it, uh, but you've got a good case, get in touch um, because I've enjoyed all of the coaching sessions I've done this year uh, and only one of those clients has been paying, um, but that's a whole series of stuff. Um, that's kind of full-time employed, you know, good job. Um, all the others have uh, in one way or another not been able to pay uh, for coaching. And mentoring and so I'm glad to do it uh, pro bono this year um, and I'm enjoying it um, it's tremendously liberating uh, to be able to help people and not ask for payment right we've got no other comments so I'm going to uh, end the stream now and say thank you all very much I've enjoyed talking uh, with you I hope you've got something valuable out of it and I hope you'll join me next time um, whenever that is and whatever we're talking about Thank you all very much.